Welcome to the Insightful Professor. In this video, we introduce some concepts and terminology associated with computer networks, that is, how computers communicate with one another. We believe this information will be beneficial to you in understanding cyber attacks, in particular something like denial of service. All of us recognize that computer terminology has touched practically every aspect of our daily lives. Many of us have smartphones, personal computers, or tablets. We have automobiles with computer technology installed, smart household appliances with computer chips installed. So we tend to take for granted the ability of electronic devices to communicate with one another. However, when we discuss the vulnerabilities of this technology and cybersecurity, we need to understand the concepts and terminology related to the way that such devices interact or communicate with one another. Moving data from one computer to another using removable media, like a flash drive or DVD, requires that this physical device that stores the data be transported to another destination. This transport can take quite a bit of time if the two computers are separated by a large geographic expanse. Physically transporting data from one computer to another using some form of removable media has been called sneakerware because the media is moved by walking from one computer to another. However, by connecting two computers, we can move data between them very quickly. In this video, we will introduce terminology and fundamental concepts associated with computer communication networks. The Internet is a computer network that interconnects billions of computing devices. Note here that we refer to Internet with a capital I, meaning the Internet that everyone is probably well aware of but internet when spelled with a small i is actually appropriate as well because what we do is we connect different networks together this is called internetworking the internet with a capital i refers to one grand network or collection of networks that's kind of worldwide so the internet is a computer network that interconnects billions of computers but we put computer here in quotes when we call it computer network because it's no longer traditional computers, but we have laptops, smartphones, tablets, and the list goes on, all kinds of devices. These devices are referred to as hosts or end systems. They're called hosts because they are hosting some application. They're also referred to as end systems because of their position within the internet. They're kind of on the fringe, like leaves on a tree. The internet itself, as we noted, is actually a network of interconnected networks. Hosts or end systems are connected by a network of communication links and packet switches. Communication links are comprised of different types of physical media, like coaxial cable, optical fiber, and radio spectrum. These links can transmit data at different rates measured in bits per second. A host or end system places a message in what are called packets that are sent to the destination host or end system. The host that is sending the data may find it necessary to segment the data or break it into smaller pieces in order to transmit it across the network. In addition to the data payload being transmitted, header information that describes the data content in some sense, but also characteristics of who's sending it, who's receiving it, and other information that might be similar to what we would put on an envelope if we were sending a letter to someone. The receiving host takes these segments that have been transmitted and as they receive them, they reassemble them to construct the original data sent by the sending host. 
the packages of information sent across the network to the destination are again referred to as packets. Because a network imposes a maximum size on its packets, when a large message or a large amount of data must be sent, the message will be broken into smaller pieces or fragments, with each piece or fragment being sent in a separate packet. To ensure proper transmission and reception of a message, the packets include, as part of the header information, a sequence number. This ensures that the receiving host can verify that it received the entire message and be able to reconstruct the message, putting these pieces or fragments in the proper order. A packet switch takes a packet arriving on one of its incoming communication links and forwards that packet on one of its outgoing communication links. A packet switch may be a router or a link layer switch. Both types forward packets toward their ultimate destination. The sequence of communication links and packet switches traversed by a packet from the sending host, H1 in this figure, to the receiving host, H2 in this figure, is known as a route or a path through the network. A host with a packet to send transmits it to the nearest router. This device could reside on a local area network or a point-to-point -point link to the internet service provider. The packet is stored there until its arrival is complete and the link has finished its processing. The packet is then forwarded to the next router along the path until it reaches the destination host where it's delivered. This mechanism is referred to as store and forward packet switching. The concept of a protocol is very important when discussing and understanding networks. A protocol can be thought of as a system of rules governing some behavior or interaction. When two people meet, they would extend a greeting such as hello. Host packet switches and other pieces of the network run protocols that control the sending and receiving of information. In this sense, we say that a protocol is a specification of an interface between modules running on different machines, as well as the communication service that the modules implement. So a protocol provides a communication service that higher level objects, such as application processes, or perhaps higher level protocols, use to exchange messages, just as these two people were following some rules when they interact and greet one another. So end systems, packet switches, and other pieces of the internet run protocols that control the sending and receiving of information within the internet. The transmission control protocol, or TCP, and the internet protocol, IP, are two of the most important protocols in the internet. The IP specifies the format of the packets that are sent and received among routers and end systems. The Internet's principal protocols are collectively known as TCP IP. Given the importance of protocols to the Internet, it's important that everyone agree on what each and every protocol does so that people can create systems and products that interoperate. This is where standards come into play. Internet standards are developed by the Internet Engineering Task Force, or IETF. The IETF standards documents are called Request for Comments, or RFCs. RFCs started out as general requests for comments, hence the name, to resolve network and protocol design problems that faced the precursor to the Internet. RFCs tend to be quite technical and detailed. 
RFCs are available online and can be fetched by anyone interested in them. They are numbered in chronological order of creation. These serve to define protocols such as TCP, IP, HTTP, SMTP. There are currently more than 6,000 RFCs. Let's take a quick look at the basic architecture of a router. This will help us to understand how packet switching occurs. Note that a router includes input ports and output ports. The routing processor executes the routing protocols, maintains routing tables and attached link state information, and computes the forwarding table for the router. Let's take a look at basic router architecture. From our figure, we saw that there are input ports, output ports, there's a switching fabric, and there's also the routing processor. The input ports terminate the incoming physical link at the router. They perform link layer functions to allow interaction with the link layer on the other side of the incoming link. They also perform a lookup function where the forwarding table is consulted to determine the output port for the incoming packet. The switching fabric connects the input ports to the output ports. This is contained entirely within the router. And finally, the output ports. These store the packets received from the switching fabric and transmit them on outgoing links by performing the necessary link layer and physical layer functions. Now, the number of supported ports may vary from a small number in enterprise routers to hundreds in a router at an ISP's edge. The switching fabric connects the router's input ports to its output ports. This switching fabric is completely contained within the router, as we previously noted. The input ports, output ports, and switching fabric are almost always implemented in hardware. Now a comment on some diagrams that you may find within textbooks or discussions of computer communication networks. Simple diagrams found in textbooks will show a router connected to another router through a communication link. The graphic often used to denote a router will be a disk with some arrows indicating input and some arrows indicating output flow. In reality, there may be many communication links entering and exiting a single router. This point has to be considered when discussing routers and their operation. Now the output port provides a link to another router in the network. So a packet enters a router through an input port and then must be directed to an output port of the router that will bring the packet closer to its destination address. The purpose of the routing algorithm can be simply stated as Given a set of routers with links connecting the routers, a routing algorithm finds a good path from the source router to the destination router. Typically, what is meant by a good path is one that has the least cost. However, there are other factors that can affect the decisions made by an algorithm. The idea of a routing algorithm is related to working through a data structure called a graph, where the nodes in the graph would be devices on the network, and the edges of the graph that connect the nodes correspond to links connecting the devices within the network. So the routing process extracts the destination address from the header, looks up the appropriate output port in the forwarding table and then directs the packet 
to the output port's buffers. The network operations on a communication device attached to the internet employ a layered architecture. Each layer has specific tasks for which it is responsible and communicates only with the layer that resides directly above or below it within this stack architecture. The Transmission Control Protocol, or TCP, accepts data from a data stream. This would be the application layer. Divides it into chunks and adds a TCP header, creating what we call a TCP segment. The TCP segment is then encapsulated in an IP or Internet Protocol datagram when it is passed from the transport layer to the network layer. The IP datagram then becomes the payload of a frame at the data link layer. On the receiving host, the components are unnested, reversing the order that we just described. So the resulting data would then be passed to the application for consumption. This nesting is depicted in our diagram here. Let's consider what exactly is being transported across the network. We see that the data link layer is responsible for packaging a frame. When the destination or receiving host receives the frame, its payload is extracted to reveal an IP packet or datagram. From this packet, the TCP segment is extracted. The header information in this segment is used to determine which application is to receive the payload of that segment. So you may ask, what's the nature of the information in these headers? That's a good question. The IP packet, also referred to as a datagram, has the following format. Observe that the IP packet or datagram contains a source address. This would be the address of the sending host and a destination address. This is the IP address of the receiving host. The payload for this packet would fall below our diagram here is the TCP segment. A TCP segment contains header information that is followed by the data payload. The header has the following format. Note that the TCP header contains the sequence number to which we made a reference earlier. Observe also that there are port numbers for the source host application and the destination host application. An application that wishes to set up a connection to a remote application process must specify that process. Because a host could be running multiple network applications, the port number provides a way to identify the sending and receiving processes. The method normally used is to define transport addresses to which processes can listen for connection requests. In the Internet, these endpoints are called ports. The more general term, however, is transport service access point, TSAP, which means a specific endpoint in the transport layer. Queuing delay and congestion can result if many packets are sent at the same time. In a network application, end systems exchange messages with one another. To send a message from a source host to a destination host, the source breaks long messages into smaller chunks of data. Between source and destination, each chunk travels through communication links and packet switches. Each packet switch has multiple links attached to it. For each attached link, the packet switch has an output buffer, which stores packets that the router is about to send into that link. Thus, output buffers play a key role in packet switching. If an arriving packet needs to be transmitted onto a link, but finds the link to be busy, 
with the transmission of another packet. The arriving packet must wait in the output buffer. Thus, in addition to the store and forward delays we discussed earlier, packets suffer output buffer queuing delays. These delays are variable and depend on the level of congestion in the network. A queuing delay refers to the time a packet spends in the memory of a switch or router waiting to be selected for transmission. Congestion occurs when intermediate switches and routers become overrun with packets, analogous to a congested highway. So should an arriving packet find that the buffer is completely full with other packets waiting for transmission, packet loss will occur. Either the arriving packet or one of the already queued packets will be dropped. A router takes a packet arriving on one of its attached communication links and forwards that packet onto another one of its attached communication links. How does the router determine to which link it should forward the packet? Well, packet forwarding is done in different ways in different types of computer networks. In the internet, every host has an address called an IP address. When a source host wants to send a packet to a destination end system, the source includes the destination's IP address in the packet's header. Each packet switch contains a forwarding table that lists all possible packet switches and gives a next top for each. This approach is similar to the way a driver who does not use a map or a GPS might travel. The driver stops, asks for directions to the next town, and then follows those directions. At the next town, he asks for directions again. As we wrap up our overview of computer networks, we wish to note that networks come in different sizes and serve a variety of communities. Frequently we talk about a local area network. We also will talk about a wide area network. Listed here are some different types of networks based upon the scale. Here we provide a few of the terms that we discussed within this video. So in this video, we provided a brief overview of communication networks. We introduced several terms when discussing computer networks. Our purpose was to provide you with some background that would help you better understand descriptions and explanations of cyber attacks, such as a denial of service attack. I hope you found this video to be useful and informative with respect to giving you a little foundation in computer networks. And once again, thanks for watching.